Okay, what's up and welcome back to the channel. This is the Broken Geek and in today's video, we're gonna carry on from where we left off in the previous episode where we were looking at the single span beam analysis module which is under the analysis and of structures and beams tab and then we're going to carry on and also look at the concrete section design module. So without wasting too much time, let's just get right into the video. Okay, so if you remember from the previous video, that is part 4 or tutorial 4, that is why you see it's written really tutorial 4 beam. I showed you how to analyze a beam using the single span beam analysis module in program. And yes, it is in demo mode, but once what you just need to know is that in demo mode, the only function that you do not have is the member transfer of all your results to the member design for combined stresses design link. So, what we did is we entered the values, entered the fixity, and we tried to model something that was similar to what we already had on the screen. And this is the beam that we had and the variety of loading that we had. And this was the output that we had. We printed it out. And we also, when we went to the calculation sheet, we decided to output it or send it to the calc pad. Now, if we go back to the calculation pad, there you go. You see the single span beam, which is untitled. 220 by 220 RC section where you have the loading, the beam data, the shear and deflection and also the bending moment. So what are we going to do now? We need to carry over from this module and go under the concrete tab and go to the concrete section design module. Now most of you would be thinking why is he taking us to the concrete section design module instead of finishing up with the analysis of a beam on elastic support module well there's a reason it's because this module ties in with this module when you're doing any concrete reinforced design well like i told you in one of the early videos we prefer to use the continuous beam and slab module but then we need to start off with the basics and the basics allow you to analyze your beam using the analysis of a single span beam module and then proceed forward and go on to design it in the concrete section design module. The only problem is this method does not give you an, an automatic bending schedule which would be generated for you when you have the continuous beam or slab module and also the deflections you get from the CB or should I say the CO1 module is much better than these two combined. But nonetheless, let's proceed and look at the concrete section design module so that you know how to use two the both of these modules in conjunction to design a reinforced concrete beam now to get started with the concrete section design the c22 module it's as easy as just clicking on it and then having it show up so i already had done it for us and there it is to save us time now by default this is the user interface that you are greeted with it starts off with a t-beam but remember, our concrete section is a rectangular section, which is a 220 by 220 section. So all we need to do is go to the input, right? This is the page that you get and click rectangular beam. So by default, it already has some data which has been entered for you. And in this case, it is designing it to the ACI 318-2014 code. But what we are doing, remember, we don't want to use that code. We want to use our own code. So go to the top to the bottom, click on the design code. Then choose BS8110997. I know this is later than 2014, but then this is what we're going to use. And if you see, when we change the code, there was a note that said, let me just change it back, design code, change it back to 318. Program is in demo mode and FCU will be limited to 15 MPA. So when you're using this in demo and this is what we're going to be doing, just to evaluate some of the features that Procon has. It will limit your design strength for your concrete to 15 megapascals. But then, don't worry about this. The beams that we're going to be designing don't really need anything above 15 MPA. And we will try the basis of this series is just to show you the basic principles of using the software. So if you want to get 20, 25, 30 MPA, you may need to upgrade your license. Talk to Procon. Remember, I don't work for Procon, so I cannot be able to tell you or teach you something that you have not paid for but at the same time there are many other ways you can skip around it if you search through the internet and everything but remember i'm not supporting that i am not condoning that that is on your own risk 
And note, I am not also employed by Procon, so I'm not going, do not disclaim, I'm not a Procon employee, so whatever I say is my own things and my own input, and these are the things I discovered on my own. Now, having said that, we're just going to click this off, and since we are back to AC3118, let's go back, go back to the design code, and then go to BS8110-1997, and yes, we get that, and we just click OK. Now remember, what do we have to do once we get it? First thing it asks you is, what is the ultimate limit state bending moment? All you have to do is go back to this one now, which is the single span beam analysis module. Or you can only just go to your calc pad where you've already input the results. Now, if you zoom in a bit, you will see that the maximum bending moment in this case is 15.90 kilonewtons per meter right at four meters so all you have to do is go back now to the concrete section design and in this case you can enter 15.90 or you can go to 16 if you want right just to round it off but in the case where you just want to be accurate or to be precise rather all you have to do is just 15.90 otherwise 16 would still be accurate but not as precise right now the ultimate limit state torsion or moment. In our case, for this one, we are just going to assume it's zero because whenever also remember our calculation pad did not give us any torsion or torsion results because none of it we were not expecting any load within the Z plane. So since we are not expecting any loads in the Z plane, in this case we are going to be analyzing it without any torsion. Now the next thing you need to enter is the ultimate limit state shear force. In this case, what you have to do is go back to your calc pad. And in our case, it's 8.902 kilonewtons. So go back to the concrete design, 8.902. If you want, you can round it up to 8.91. Just go to 8.91 and you're good to go. Then the next thing is going to ask you what is the web width and in this case it's just telling you what is the width of the beam. In this case B, if you go down there, there is B. So in our case we have a 220 section, 220 which is square. So all we're going to do is we're going to put 220 there and even for the total height we're just going to put 220 because we have a 220 by 220 section. Remember when we put our section, just zoom out, we have a 220 by 220 RC section. Now go back to the concrete section design. And in this case, since we don't have a flanged beam, we're going to leave this as zero. Next, what we need to put is the reinforced centroid depth DCT. This is just the depth to the center of your top steel. In our case, I'm not going to put 50. I am going to go with 40. For I'm assuming a cover to length of 30 and a length diameter of 10, right? And so, yes, let's, let's, we could put it and assuming bars of... 12 millimeter diameter so if we divide that by 2 we will get to 30 plus 10 plus half of 12 which is 6 so that's actually 46 there what there we go we put it at 46 but you can always round it up so 50 was actually a good position as well so if you want to round it up in terms of 10 you can always do that and just round it up to 50 now for fcu remember we're using demo mode but if you were using a full license, you could change this from anything that you'd want. But in our case, it's automatically limited to 15. So there's no way we can change it. As you can see, it's already in gray. Now, FY for your main bars. Remember, when we set our user preferences, this is where we set what the default main bar or high yield steel strength would be. But in this case, you can always change it to whatever you want, 250, 410. But in this case, we're just going to stick to 460. Now, the next thing is it's FYV. This is just the yield stress or the maximum tensile stress for your links or stair ups. So, what you could do is you, if you want, in this case, I'm just going to change it to 250 because I'm going to assume R type bars. The redistribution, we don't want any redistribution. And what are we going to say? We're just going to say this is tutorial now. Since this is tutorial 5 beam design, and we're going to leave it at that. Once everything has been done, and if you go to the error list, there is nothing there. This means everything you've inputted nicely and correctly. Now you can proceed to analyze and design. All you have to do is go to the design. And it tells you FCU is limited to 15 because it's now calculating. And 
voila, there you go. You have 14.8 kilo. These are the results or the design results. So in this case, it is telling us that the maximum capacity or the maximum moment this beam can carry is actually 14.8. So unfortunately, this design fails when it comes to the moment capacity. So the reason why is because it's telling us it's 14.8 and it's already highlighted in red. And if you go back to the input, your maximum moment you put is 15.9. Oh, so there are ways you can try and change this. One could be to try and change the depth of the center of the steel. Maybe try and put it at 40. Do a design again. And in this case, once you reduce the cover, the capacity of your beam also increases. Now it's saying it can carry a maximum moment of 16.6 .6 kilonewtons. So in this case, that would mean the cover to length would be 20 and the length diameter, assuming a length of 10, you have 30, then assuming your bars to be Y16 bars or even Y20 bars, then just half it up. That's how you get to 40. Now, so as you can see, you can play around with it, but then as you saw, your number was highlighted in red and this number will always indicate the maximum moment your beam can carry so always you want this to be greater than what you put in next what do you have you have for the shear it's telling us the shear stress induced in the beam due to the loads is going to be 0 0.23 and the maximum capacity or the shear capacity of your beam the maximum capacity or the stress it can handle is 0 0.67 which is greater than 0 0.23 so you're good to go and then it goes on to tell you that you don't even need any stirrups. The amount of uh, stirrups needed is zero. But then please provide a nominal stirrups of 0 0.4048 square millimeters. But then we had forgotten to interpret these ones as well. Uh, the maximum moment capacity is 16.6. .6 and it says to the maximum or the minimum amount of steel rather that it needs is 256 square millimeters right and in the top for the compression this is for in the tension zone in the compression zone it is telling us that the steel it requires is zero so in other words you don't need any bars at the top of your beam but then it also tells you the minimum amount of steel even when you don't have any loads is going to be 63 square millimeters now if you go to torsion for the web it's telling us this the capacity is zero but then the maximum also is zero so this is the only time where if anything is highlighted in red and it's zero it's okay so this one we can pass away we can just forget about it or leave it alone because it's zero and zero so it just means if you have any torsion that will happen then your beam will fail now having seen these results it goes on to suggest reinforcement for you so in this case, the suggested reinforcement configurations are, in this case, it's telling us for the bars that you can put in the tension zone, you're going to put four Y10s at the bottom to give you 314 square millimeters or three Y12s to give you 339 square millimeters or you can use two Y16s to give you 402 square millimeters. Then in the case for stirrups or the links, it's telling you you can use y8 actually it's r8 right the mild steel you can use eight millimeter diameter bars at a spacing of 150 to give you an 0.67 or 10 millimeter diameter bars at a spacing of 1 to 50 to give you 1.05 or 12 millimeter diameter bars at 150 to give you 1.51 so the selection is up to you same applies here the selection is up to you and in this case it's telling you the bars that you need in the compression zone are zero that is at the top of the beam so you don't need anything no longitudinal bars needed no longitudinal bars needed combined longitudinal bars for moment and web torsion nothing is needed because we don't have any torsion and these are the results that you need now remember you can always zoom in if you go to the calculation sheet right and edit your header then load default right this is the job title and the date is okay and then you're just going to say what you would want if you want to print now you can always print it go to the properties the pages change it from a letter then you go to a4 then you click okay okay 
And in this case, what we're going to say is concrete. We're just going to say this is concrete. Forgive me for this, but concrete section design. And you're just going to say this is zero 02 because we want our documents from now on to be 0203. We're just going to number them later on. So just save it as that. And it automatically prints out to whatever your default folder is. And what you're going to do now, in this case, you can always send it to the calc pad. And if you go to the calc pad, right, and you go, if you zoom out, remember, there you go. You have the input tables for the single span beam analysis then just after that you're going to have the concrete section design for flexure tutorial b5 beam design so this has been it this has been a nice and long tutorial which has been acquainting you with the single span beam analysis module and goes on to acquaint you with the concrete section design module so now you know you can use these modules in conjunction because after all it's a design suite so you can use the analysis module in conjunction with the design module to come up with your final result. So the issue is after you have done this, the next thing that you would want to do now, if uh, you still basics, is to go to CAD and detailing and now detail your beam. But as you already know, we already have a series that we're doing and we're going to do this in another video where we'll be doing it. But as for now, let's continue with our analysis and design modules. But we will see if we can do the past video in the next video. So without wasting too much time, uh, we're going to wrap up the video from now. And I'll see you in the next lesson, which will be part six.